Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. In previous tutorial, we understand what is Saga choreography design pattern and its internal workflow. Also, we created project skeleton, right? So in this tutorial, we'll complete the implementation part. If anyone is not aware about what is Saga and its use case, then I would strongly suggest you to check out my previous tutorial. Otherwise, it will be tough for you to understand this implementation part because I will write the implementation as per the workflow which we discussed in our previous tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. So if you can remember, this is the exact project skeleton we created. Let's begin with the common DTOs so that we'll add a couple of DTOs and events class so that we can reuse those DTO and events in order service and payment service. Now let me go to this DTO package, main, then go to the Java, then go to the package. I will create a package called DTO. Similarly, I will create another package called event. Okay. Now let me create a couple of DTO class. Since we are processing the order, I will create a DTO class called order request DTO. So I will name it order request DTO. Similarly, I can create a class called order response DTO. Just create a class order response DTO. Fine. Let's go to the order request DTO and I will add couple of field user ID, product ID, amount and order ID. So while purchasing a order, user must need to pass these four fields. User ID he need to pass because based on that user ID we need to validate the available amount in payment service. Similarly, he need to pass the product ID which product he want to purchase and what is the amount of that particular product. And order ID will be auto generated through the system. Okay. So as you added Lombok, we no need to write getter and setter manually. So what we can do, we'll just write at the red data. Okay. So Lombok annotation is not showing. Let's go to the pom.xml. Yeah, so we just need to add the Lombok dependency. Now once you added the dependency, just go to the folder and just do on Maven re-import. Okay. Once import completed, then go to the DTO. Now, if you type other data, you can see the annotation, right? So you just need to add other data. Then we just want all argument constructor. Also, you want no argument constructor. Fine. Now similarly, let me create couple of field in our order response. So just go, go to order response DTO and I will use the same field which I just want to return as part of response. Also I just want to return order status. Okay. So I will just write order status, order status. So I just need to create a enum with this order status. Okay. So I will just create a enum inside this event. So just go to new then click on java class and let's change it to enum then i'll just add it order status so as part of this order status i just want to show let's say order completed then order cancelled okay what else we can add order created right so what i'll do i'll just follow the order so the first step will be order created then either user will get order completed or order cancelled okay so this is what my enum now let's go to order response DTO so let me import this class fine it import from the event similarly let me create another request DTO for payment so I'll just create a Java class let's say payment request DTO then here also I'll just add couple of field order ID, user ID and amount. So in payment request DTO, we must need to pass this user ID and amount. Okay. So that based on that particular user, what is the exact amount available in user balance table, you can validate in payment service. So these are the field we need to pass as part of payment request DTO. So I will just add annotation at the red data. We just need all argument constructor. We just need no argument constructor. Okay. Let's copy this and I will add same in this order response DTO as well. Fine. Now let's move into the event creation. Okay. So let me close all. Now I'll just create an event called 
order event something like that let me create a class so i'll name it order event similarly we will create another event called payment event okay so i'll just create a class called order event and here i will just send the request order request dto and order status okay so i'll just write private order request dto let's say order request dto and i just want to pass private order status which is the enum we just created right fine so as part of each event i just want to pass the date of that particular event and i want to generate some random event id so what i'll do i'll just write private let's say uh, uuid event id i'll create something like uuid dot random uuid and date i'll just pass the current date let's say i'll just add private date date equal to new date fine so i just need to pass this as part of order event and as well as the payment event so let me create another class let's say java class payment event okay so here also i need to pass this event id and date so instead of adding it manually what i'll do i'll just create a interface let's say the interface name is event in event i'll just write two method let's say uuid get event id or something like that then date util date get date okay so then go to the order event and i will implement that from event then i just need to override these two method so as part of this get event id i'll just send this then as part of date or you can name it event date just written here fine similarly i just need to pass these two field as part of uh, this payment event so i'll just add it here then i'll just implement from event then i will just set these two field let me override let's say event id and event date similarly as part of this payment event i just need to send private payment request dto and also i just need to pass payment status okay i'll just create another enum so let me copy this then i'll just create another enum new java class i will change it to enum payment status so in this payment status i will add something like payment success or complete anything you can write okay then i will just write payment failed okay so better we'll change it to payment completed because it should be in past tense payment completed payment failed fine now go to the payment event so we added all the required attributes related to our event now to build this order event what i'll do i'll just not write the um, lombok related annotation i'll manually write the constructor so that i can pass only these two fields so what i'll do i'll just add the constructor just write generate then i'll just use the constructor i just want these two fields okay just add okay similarly i'll just create another constructor for payment status payment event so i also just need to pass these two okay so i'll just add create a constructor generate then constructor i'll just add these two field fine also i just want to add default constructor so what i'll do i can directly add here no our constructor here also i will just add no arc constructor that's fine so we successfully created all dtos and events so we are done with our common dtos now we just want to reuse this common dtos in order service and payment service so for that what i need to do we just need to add this common dtos as a dependency in order service and payment service so let's go to the order service pom.xml and then i'll write another dependency here let's say dependency then artifact id i will specify common hyphen dtos 
okay then group id i will specify com java techy common details okay so let me format it same dependency i just need to add in payment service pom.xml as well go to the payment service pom.xml then here also i just need to add the same dependency fine so once you change in your pom.xml always remember to do the maven reimport okay so that the changes will be reflected in your code now let's start writing the code for order service and payment service so let me close this let me go to the order service let's create couple of package here so i'll just create a package called let's say entity okay similarly i will just create another package called service then we'll just create a package called let's say repository then we'll create a package called controller then i'll just create another package called event config something like that okay so i'll name it config only fine then let's start creating the entity so i'll just create a class let's say i'll give the name something like purchase order okay so i'll just annotate here at the right entity then i'll just specify table and i'll specify the name of table let's say purchase order tbl something like that okay so here i'll just add private integer id then i will just add user id and product id okay then also i will just add price private integer price then i just need to add the order status and payment status so this is my entity which will be stored in database usually when a user will try to purchase something then also you just want to capture the order status of that particular order and payment status so that's the reason i just need to add this field order status so if you observe this order status is coming from different folder which is common details or different module you can say right just add it order status then i will similarly add private payment status fine i just need to add this at the rate id and i want it to be auto generated so i'll just add generated value since these are the enum to store this in database i just use something called enumerated then i just need to specify the type of it so i can write something like enum type okay dot string or something like that yeah so let me copy same for payment status fine so i just need to add add the red data then all argument constructor i will just add no argument constructor fine now let me create the repository for it let let me create a java class so i'll change it to interface i'll name it let's say order repository i'll just extend it from jpa repository so let me type jpa yeah so i just need to add the model as a purchase order right then data type integer fine since we are using jpa with mysql so we just need to add few properties related to our data source right so inside the resource folder i am creating a file called application dot properties i will just add this attribute driver class name url username password so sql to see the sql statement in console and hibernate ddl auto we just make it update and dialect and format sql okay so these are the attribute i just added to make data source up and running in this application fine then let's start writing the controller class okay so just create a new class so i'll name it order controller fine i just need to annotate here at the rate rest controller then also i can use the request mapping which will be act as a root url so i'll just give let's say order then i just need to write a endpoint so let's quickly write a endpoint to create a order so i'll just write public 
I just want to return the entity itself, so I will just return purchase order. The method name I will name it create order and it will take the input as a order request. Okay. Order request DTO and we just need to annotate at the rate request body because this is the post mapping. Fine. Then I just need to annotate here at the rate post mapping and give the URL something like create. Fine. So what I just need to do, let me go there. So if you observe in this order request DTO, we have the field called user ID, product ID, amount and order ID. To process a order transaction, we need these are the field. That's why I just added as part of the request body. Okay. Then I just need to call the service to create that order. So what I'll do, I'll just create a class called order service. So let me go to the service package. I'll just create a class called order service. Fine. I just need to inject this order service inside this order controller. So I'll just write private order service. Then I just need to use auto add to inject it. Right. So I can directly return here order service dot create order. And I will just pass this order request DTO. Fine. So I just need to create this create order method inside this order service. So let me create this method. Fine. Now in this order service, I just need to inject my repository, right? So I'll just use private order repo. I'll just use auto add. Now I just need to convert this DTO to entity so that I can directly save this order repository this particular order object which is the purchase order right so what i'll do i'll just use order repository dot save i'll just give this order request dto but it will not work right i just need to convert this order request dto to this purchase order then only i can save it so i'll just write a method i'll just write a private method here private who will return me the purchase order object convert DTO to entity something like that and we will take the order request DTO fine so ID will be auto generated we are not going to add the ID manually apart from ID we, need, we just need to set the other attributes so I will just change it to DTO then I will just add this piece of code we will create the object of purchase order and then from the DTO, we will get the value and we will set it to the order object. Okay. So let me import this. Fine. So the initial status of order is order created. So that in background, we will run the other logic to validate the um, user balance in payment service and all this stuff. But initially, user will get this message. Your order is created. Then based on the availability of uh, credit limit, the status will be changed. Order cancelled or order completed. Okay. Now what I will do, I will just call this method convert DTO to entity and then I will just pass this order request DTO fine so it will save the order object in database and it will return the order object so let me capture that let's say order fine so what next I will just set this order ID to this order request DTO object okay so what I will do I will just write order request DTO dot set order ID I'll just give this order dot get ID which will be auto generated right so that the entire transaction will be in a single track this order ID will be mapped in everywhere okay now the next step we just need to publish an order event so if you remember the diagram initially when order service receive a request immediately he just need to produce an event to this topic right so the topic name will be order event and once order service receive the create order request he just need to publish that event to the particular topic so what we will do let me go to the IntelliJ ID so I will just write here produce Kafka event with status order created so that's the status will be published to the order event topic okay so if you go to the diagram once 
if your order service receive the request immediately it will publish the event to this order event topic and from this order event topic payment service will consume that event and you will validate the user balance okay so what we'll do we'll just create a separate producer class so i'll just create a separate class let me create a class called order status publisher something like that fine then i will just annotate this at the rate service you can annotate at the rate component as well and then i just need to use sync dot many sync is a publisher who will just help to emit the event okay so i will just use if you are familiar with webflux you should aware about this sync okay so syncs if you observe reactor dot core dot publisher so just use this dot many okay then just specify what you want to publish over the kafka so i just want to publish over the kafka this order event and if you will go inside this order event it contains the order request detail and order status so just go back so i'll just name it order sync something like that and i just need to use at the rate auto add to inject that then i will just write a method public void publish let's say order event or something like that order event and it will take the argument order request detail and order status fine and with this value we'll just need to create a order event object so i'll just create order event order event equal to new order event and i just need to pass this order request detail as well as order status fine then we just need to emit that event so to emit that event what i need to do i'll directly use order syncs there is a method something called try emit next i can use this then just use this order event then go to the order service and here you can simply write order status publisher okay first i need to inject that so i'll just use private let me close this yeah i'll just use private order status publisher then order status publisher i'll just inject using auto add then i can directly use that value order status publisher dot publish order event and just pass the order request detail and then just pass the order status as order created dot order created and then just return the order request purchase order object to the user with the status your order is created okay so what i'll do i'll just return this order so once again if you observe we are just persisting that order object to our database with order status created and then immediately we are publishing an event to order event topic so that payment service can consume that so this should be uh, executed in a single transaction so we just need to annotate at the rate transactional okay so let me format this and also i'll just write another method to view all the purchase order so i'll just write public will return me the list of purchase order get all orders something like that then i will directly return order repo dot find all then i will directly go to the controller so i'll just write another endpoint public let's say will return me the list of purchase order get orders directly use return service order service dot get all orders and simply just annotate here at the rate get mapping that's it i don't want to add any uh, child url for this fine now since we are already publishing the event from the order status order service using this order status publisher again we need to write a code to publish through the kafka okay since we are using spring cloud stream the approach is straight forward what i'll do i'll just create another config class java class i'll name it order publisher then what else we say i'll 
specify something like order publisher config okay then I just need to annotate this at the rate configuration fine then I just need to write sync so I will write public syncs of many of type order event order event then I will name it order syncs fine then I will simply return syncs dot many dot multicast what else let me check that on back pressure buffer ok then I just need to annotate at the rate bin now the actual Kafka publisher I am going to write here now so just write public who is going to supply flux of order event ok so that's the reason I am just using supplier from java Eight functional interface so if you know spring cloud function then you can write this functional style coding so as part of supplier I just want to publish flux of order event ok then I will name it order supplier and we will take the argument as let me copy this Uh, so I will declare the variable syncs fine so if you will go inside this supplier it will just return the argument ok so now what we need to do we will just simply write return this sync as flux fine now I just need to annotate at the rate bin so if you are not familiar with reactive programming approach you may find this syntax is complicated just go through the spring boot web flux documentation at least you can get some clue about these methods ok now we just configure the publisher and everything now how my application order service will get to know who is my publisher and what is the topic name that we need to inform to this order service so for that just create a file create a file called application dot yaml here since we are using spring cloud stream you can directly write spring cloud stream then definition or something like that function we are using spring cloud function approach right in this function you just need to specify the definition of your method who will be your publisher so I will just write definition then I just need to specify the method name who is my publisher ok so if you go to the order publisher config this is what the method who is going to publish the event to order event topic so just copy the method name and just add it ok then next step we just need to specify the bindings so just type bindings and just specify your topic name so if you are using spring cloud stream functional style of coding then as part of the bindings to uh, provide your consumers or producer you just need to follow some pattern so the definition name is order supplier right so what you just need to do order supplier and this will be my publisher so you just need to specify out and you just need to specify a number fine then you just need to add the destination which will be your topic name so I will just specify the topic name as order event that's what we understood as part of diagram right the topic name is order event so just go here you just write the order event so in this approach you can specify n number of producer or publisher let's say you have something called payment supplier you can just write payment supplier out and you can specify 0 or 1 any number based on the order you are specifying ok so if you observe this diagram order service will publish the event from the or to the order event topic and payment service will consume that similarly payment service will produce the event to payment event again order service is going to consume that payment event topic ok so as of now I am not configuring the consumer here because we will move to the payment service we will go with the flow then we will at end we will just add the consumer in this order service ok also I will just specify the server port let's say 8081 something like that so we are done with our order service now let's move into the payment service who listen to this order event topic ok 
so just go to the payment service here also we just need to create couple of package so let me close everything i'll just create a package called entity so i'll create a package called entity similarly i create another package called service then i'll just create another package called repository and then i'll just create a package called config then quickly create a entity called user balance so just create a class java class name it user balance fine i just need to annotate at the right entity then i just need to annotate at the right table but let's ignore it based on your class name it will create a table so i'll just add few field i'll just add private int user id okay similarly i'll just add private int price if you observe the diagram guys i am going with the flow so there will be no way to distract from the flow so try to focus the code okay so if you observe in this payment service we are maintaining user id and amount right that's what the entity i am creating here to validate the user balance so what else i just need to annotate here at the right id that's fine also i will just create another entity called user transaction so let's say java class user transaction i'll just annotate at the right entity so what i'll do i'll just write here at the right data all argument constructor no argument constructor okay go to the user transaction then let me add few field here private integer i just want to map order id here so that the user transaction will be rolled back if there is something going wrong in the payment processing or payment is not available and we can keep track that using this order id and also i'll just add few field user id and i'll say it amount so what i'll do just add this as a at the right id and here also i'll copy the same annotation just add it similar way we just need to create repository for these two uh, entity right so i'll just create let me copy this user balance class name i'll create a class i'll create a interface itself i'll name it user balance repository and then it will extends from jpa repository so i will give it user balance as my model name and then the data type is integer right similarly i will also create another repository for this user transaction so i just copy the class name create a separate interface i will name it user transaction repository then extend it from jpa repository just give the entity class user transaction then data type of your primary key which is integer right so we created two entity and also we created corresponding repository now let me close this what we need to do we also need to configure the data source related properties in this application dot properties file right create a separate file application dot properties then i'll directly copy from here so go to the payment service application dot properties just paste it that's fine now if you'll go to the diagram so let me erase it so that i can explain you again so the first step we already completed order service will publish the event to this order event topic also we configured this order event and order supplier in our application.yml file now the next step this particular order event will be consumed by this payment service right so we need to write a consumer in the payment service also if you observe payment service will consume the event and also it will do some validation then again it will just produce a event to another topic right so the first step will just consume the event from payment service this is the event so let's write the 
separate consumer in this payment service. Now let's go to the IntelliJ ID, go to the config. I'll just create a class. Let's say payment uh, something Kafka config or something like that. Or I can specify payment consumer config. Okay. So I'll just specify at the rate configuration. Fine. So in this payment consumer config, it will consume the order event and again it will publish the payment event, right? So once again, if you go to the diagram, in this payment service, it will just consume the order event and it will publish the payment event. So to perform that, what I'll do, I'll just write a method here, public, who will consume the order event, right? So I'll just write consumer, consumer. But if you will use consumer, we cannot perform two argument, right? So I will take it function. So if you observe, function is also came from Java util function. So this will be part of Java 8. So as part of function, I will consume flux of order event. Okay. So I will just specify order event. And also I will just publish flux of payment event. So I can write something like flux of payment event. Fine. So I'll just name it payment processor. It will consume the order event from the order event topic and it will process the data. It will validate the payment and once everything OK, it will just publish another event payment event. That's what we are doing here, right? So let me clear it once again. So it will just pub consume the order event and it will validate something. Again, it will publish the payment event. That's what we configured here. Okay. So let me make it capital. Fine. Now what we'll do, we'll get the order event, right? Let's process it. So I'll just use order event flux. Okay then order event flux dot I'll directly use the flat map and I'll use another private method to process that so what I can do I'll just create a separate method let's say process payment I'll just create this method fine so this will take the order event and it will return the so let me remove this it will just return mono of payment event okay also just annotated here at the red bin so that it will act as a both publisher and consumer okay now in this method what we are going to do so let me write the algorithm so that it will easy for you to understand get the user id then check the balance availability fine if balance sufficient then payment completed so I'll write something like this payment completed and deduct amount okay deduct amount from DB if payment fail or payment not sufficient then simply cancel the order event or what you can say cancel the order event and update the amount in DB okay so let me close this yeah this is what the algorithm we are going to write here okay so what I will do first I will check the order event status or order status if it is created then I will process the new order event if it is not created then I will just cancel the order event okay so what I will do I will just write if order status dot get okay let's go to the order status I can directly go back. So this is the enum, right? Order status. 
dot order created dot equals the status we are getting from the order event it means if you go to the order service let's go to the order service here we are publishing the event right with order status created if it is created then we are going to process it in our payment service so let's go back here so i'll directly do something like order event dot get order status okay there is no getter method go to the order event class i will just annotate here at the red data similarly go to the payment event and also i will just add here at the red data okay now go to the payment consumer config so here i'll just check order event dot get order status dot get so we can simply validate here right order event dot get order status will give the enum and we are validating with the enum if the status is order created then what we need to do i'll just use return mono dot from supplier okay then i will just write a service method and i'll execute this piece of logic okay so what i'll do i'll just create a service call let me create a service first so go here let me create a class called payment service okay then i'll just annotate here at the red service then go back here i'll direct i just need to inject that as well here right private payment service what is the mistake okay i just need to refactor it right so i'll just use shift f6 it should be capital class name should be starts with upper case so i'll just use payment service payment service then i just need to use auto add fine then i can directly write that method this dot payment service i'll write a method something like new order event okay and then i can directly pass this order event so let me close this that's fine right so now let's create this method similarly go to the payment consumer config else i just want to return mono of from supplier i'll just use another method to cancel order event this dot payment service dot cancel order event so just give the event here create this method fine so we are good in our payment consumer config this will consume the event from order event topic that's what we understood as part of our presentation right and this is what the algorithm we are going to perform in our payment service if order status created then create the new order event and update the user balance in database if there is something going wrong payment is not available or amount is not available for that particular user then cancel that order event and update the amount in the user balance db that's what we are going to do so let's go to the payment service and let me change the return type this will return me the payment event okay and in this cancel order i can directly return the bar i i don't want to display anything or i don't want to return anything so as part of this payment service i just need to inject both the repository to perform the database logic right so what i'll do i'll just use private user balance repo so i'll just use user balance repository i'll just use auto add similarly i just need to use user transaction repository as well private user transaction repo then use auto add so initially if you go to the user balance uh, let's go to the user balance entity we have user id and price right initially let's dump some dummy data to this user balance table at the time of application startup so let's go to the payment service what i'll do i'll just write a method public void init okay i'll just write user balance 
in db fine so let's make it upper case fine i'll just use post construct so this is the this annotation is replacement of init method this will execute at the time of application startup so what i'll do i'll directly use user balance repository dot save all okay i'll just add something stream of couple of user object so just import the class import this class then convert this to list fine at the time of application startup these are the entry will be stored in this user balance table okay now what next let me go to this payment consumer config and let me copy this why this is crying so let me check no instance of type okay this should be from runnable not supplier fine now go to the payment service let me add this logic so that i can explain you while writing the code fine just let me add this first get the user id we'll get the user id from this order event right so from this order event what we can get if we'll go to the order event we can get the order request detail who have user id right let's go back let's get that order request detail order request detail equal to order event dot get order request detail now one more thing additional step we need to do from this order request detail also we need to build a payment request detail to process that payment right so what i'll do i'll just create a object of payment request detail payment request detail payment request detail equal to new payment request detail and then i just need to pass your order request detail dot get order id so let me check the order here if you'll go to the payment request detail class order id user id and amount right everything will get from the order request detail itself and just map it here so order request detail dot get product id let me verify one second user id and amount right order request detail get user id then just map the amount order request detail dot get the amount fine we build this code let me enter this fine we created this payment request detail object now let's use the second step check the balance availability based on the user id so what i'll do i'll just use the user balance repository dot find by id find by id then simply i can pass order request detail dot get user id just get me the user balance for the particular user id okay so if you will observe for let's say for 101 we added 5000 okay so that's what this uh, repo code will be fetch from the db based on the user id if i will give 101 it will give me the user id as well as its balance now we just need to check the purchase order amount is within the limit of the available balance or not now let's say user is trying to purchase something called 3000 and that particular user 101 having 5000 so we just need to validate that as well okay so what i'll do i'll just use filter user balance okay if user balance is greater than the purchased amount so what i'll do i'll just use ub dot get price if it is greater than the purchased amount or the order request amount then process that so what i'll do i'll just use order request detail dot get amount okay if this scenario is success then update the amount in database so what i'll do i'll just use map get the user balance okay then update in database so what i'll do i'll just use ub dot set price i'll directly use what i'll do i'll just deduct the amount right ub dot get price minus the order price which will be this order request detail 
get amount so the variable name is not constant here better you can keep price in both the case in order request detail i named it amount and here it is price so it may be confusing okay then next just simply update the user transaction so what i will do i will just use user transaction repository dot save create a user transaction object so i'll just create new user transaction object fine then i'll just map the field so what i'll do i'll just use order request detail so if you'll go to the user transaction let me go to this class order id user id and amount okay we just need to map this field order request detail dot get user id then order request detail dot get what is the next field user id right so let me verify once again order id user id let me go back so this will be order id get order id get user id then order request detail dot get amount fine so let me close this so what's wrong here okay let me check this okay this should be user transaction repository right so we just need to save the user transaction and once we saved it we just need to return the new payment event with status payment completed okay just return new payment event if you go to the payment event class there is a constructor with the payment request detail and payment status okay that's the reason we build here the payment request detail to publish a payment event and the payment status is you can write payment status payment completed fine if there is a failure what we need to do simply you can write or else new payment event payment request detail with payment status payment failed what is that payment status you can use payment failed fine so this approach is straightforward get the available amount for that particular user id and check the purchased amount if it is greater than the user available balance then cancel that if it is within the limit then process that that's what we just did here and this is what the logic we wrote here right so let me format it fine so what we just need to do just return this so i can directly return it here fine so we just need to annotate this is at the red transactional because at the same transaction we are going to update the record here itself right and let's say this cancel order event as we are already committing the record in this user transaction repository so we just need to roll back that if there is a cancel order event if the amount is not sufficient to purchase that order as per the user balance so this also i just need to use at the red transactional now we have the order event here what do i need to do i will just use uh, transaction or user transaction repository okay dot find by id so order id is primary key here right so you can directly get it from order event dot get order request detail dot get order id fine we'll just get the object if this is present okay then get the user transaction object and delete that user transaction repository dot delete give this object and also update the balance in table user balance table so for that user balance repository okay dot find by id give the user id ut dot get user id fine you get the user id and his balance just update the amount if it is not sufficient then there is no sense to deduct that amount right it should be back to the user so what i'll do i'll just use if present just update it user balance ev dot get amount plus or what i can do i'll directly use ev dot user balance dot set amount okay ev dot user balance dot get amount 
and the deducted amount which is which will be user transaction dot get amount just add the amount again okay so we are done with the new order event and new or what is that cancel order event right so we are almost done in our payment service we configured all the event and we configured the publisher consumer everything right now how your payment service application know from where you need to consume the event or what is the exact topic for that and where you need to publish the event so if you go to the project if you go to the payment consumer config we just created a payment processor this will act as a both consumer from the order event topic and also publish to the payment event topic okay so this configuration the way we did for our order service same we need to do for our payment service using spring cloud stream go to the resource and just create a file called application dot yml then here i just need to write spring cloud stream okay then i just need to define the function who will act as a publisher and consumer so if you go here this is what the function name just copy this this is what the functional style of coding spring cloud function so just go to application dot yml as part of function i will just add this name fine now similarly you just need to specify the bindings so you can just add here there is something wrong in the pattern yeah we should not add here we should add the definition right then you just need to add the bindings so just type here bindings and then you just need to follow the order so just copy the method name in the bindings you just need to specify the payment processor then who will be your consumer means what is the topic you are consuming so i am consuming from order event right so i'll just use in hyphen zero in means consumer okay so i'll just consume the destination will be order event and again after validate the payment i just want to publish the event to the payment event topic so similarly you just need to write this payment processor so you just need to follow the proper order and i just want to publish it that's the reason i just specify out and specify the number then specify the destination that is payment event so guys this order event and payment event my topic name i also created the event class with the same name it might be confusing but remember this order event and payment event is my topic name so if you observe this is what my payment processor who will consume the event from order event topic and again after validate the user balance he will publish the event to the payment event topic that's the reason out means producer in means consumer okay so just save this let's go back to the diagram so so far we completed this part order service publish the event to order event payment service consume that event and again payment service validated that and he just produced the event to the payment event that's what just we configured here right now the next step we just need to write the logic in the order service to consume that event from the payment event topic to check if from the payment event topic he is getting the payment status is completed then just complete the order otherwise just cancel the order okay that's what the last thing we just need to write so let me clear this we'll simply write this consumer part now from the order service who we'll listen to this payment event topic okay so let's go to the payment service code just go back to the order service let me close everything okay so let me close this as well now in this config i'll just write another class to consume the payment event from the payment service so i'll just write a class let's say what i will mention here event consumer config something like that okay fine i just need to annotate at the red configuration then next just write a consumer method which will act as a consumer okay consume 
it will consume the payment event from payment service right so i will name it payment event consumer something like that okay so here simply i will just listen to the payment event topic okay then we'll check the payment status we'll check payment status if payment status completed then complete the order okay if payment status fail then cancel the order this is what the algorithm we are going to write here so for that what i will do instead of writing in the consumer logic i will just create a separate class first let me annotate this at the red bin so that it will be exposed as a function so i will just create another class so i will name that class something like order status update event handler order status update handler or something like that okay again i just need to configure at the red configuration fine here simply i will inject the order repository to update the order in db right order repository or something that purchase order repository right order repository let me try yeah it is order repository then i use repo inject using auto add also i just want to publish the event if there is a payment incomplete okay so if you remember we just created one order status publisher in the service package right so let me inject that as well order status publisher right i will also inject same using auto add so now let's write the method just write public void update order we'll take the argument as int order id okay or i'll just name it id the same will be considered as order id and also i will just use consumer of purchase order i'll name it consumer something like that okay then first i'll find the order object from the order repository by this id which will be auto generated right so what i'll do i'll directly use return repository repository dot find by id i'll just give this order id okay if this user present dot if it is present then just use the consumer dot then and just write a separate method to perform the update order okay so i'll just use this update order so i'll just create this method now fine so why this is crying yeah so the method return type is void we no need to return anything just remove it so in this update order what we need to do we just need to check the payment status if the payment status is completed then mark this order as completed otherwise just cancel that order so for that what i will do i will just annotate here first at the rate transactional okay so i'll just simply get the payment status from the purchase order itself so i'll just write payment status dot payment completed is equals the status will get from purchase order dot get payment status if it is so i need to add it in if otherwise will directly capture in a boolean so that we will use it okay so i will define to the local variable each complete something like that or we'll just name it each payment complete fine 
now based on this payment status we just need to update the order status if payment completed then order status will be order completed okay so what i'll do i'll just use order status order completed otherwise order status order cancelled fine just define a local variable so i'll just use directly here the order status fine if the payment is completed then mark that order status as order completed else order status is order cancelled now same i just need to update so just update in purchase order dot set order status give this order status fine if not completed then just call the order status publisher okay this dot order status publisher or what i mentioned publisher publisher dot publish order event so here we just need to pass the order request detail and order status so for that what i just need to do we don't have order request detail object here we just need to build it so i'll just create a separate private method so let me write something like public will return me the order request detail so i'll name the method convert entity to dto so we have the purchase order from the purchase order we just need to get the order request dto object so that we can pass it just copy this then simply we just need to do the getter setter only so i'll just create object of this order request dto order request dto equal to new order request dto fine then i just need to set one by one order request dto dot set order id will get it from purchase order dot get id what is this get id fine similarly we can save other field order status request dto dot set user id you can get it from purchase order dot get user id similarly order request dto dot set amount you can get it from purchase order dot get amount or price what else order request dto dot set what we missed amount product id right product id you can get it from purchase order dto dot get product id then you can simply pass this convert entity to dto just pass this purchase order and then just pass the order status fine so we are good now we just need to return this right return order request dto so we are good there is something error yeah we just need to call the this method update order method from this event consumer config now so what i'll do just inject that class private order status update handler let's say handler i'll just use auto add okay now let me format this now here simply i can directly call this okay so i'll directly use return i will get the payment object which will be payment event and then i just need to pass it okay just use this uh, what is this method name handler this is the variable name dot update order okay then i will directly pass payment dot get payment request detail because this is what the i will get the payment event from the payment event topic that will be sent by the payment service okay and here i will just pass the order id fine then similarly i just need to pass the consumer which will be purchase order object i can directly pass po dot set payment status payment dot get payment status fine because the payment event which is sending by payment service from there only we are getting the actual payment status 
and same we are just giving to the this particular update order event and we are validating here this is what we are doing right so that's the reason i just used consumer here so now we are good code wise we are good now if you observe the architecture we just need to configure this consumer in our application.yml fine we already configure the producer and now we just need to configure the consumer that we need to mention we are going to read it from the payment event topic so if you will go to your application.yml file in your order service go to the application.yml file here you just need to specify the consumer topic name means where we are going to consume and who is going to consume so if you observe this is where the method using that i am going to consume the payment event from the payment event topic okay so just go to application.yml and here you just need to follow the proper pattern you just need to add the method name and you are going to consume it right you just need to pass in then you just need to pass the number and then add it then give the destination will be payment event right also next you need to configure who is your consumer that method name you need to add here okay so just copy this method name you just need to pass as part of this function definition so just add the semicolon and paste it so this order supplier is my producer and this payment event consumer is my consumer who will going to listen the payment event topic from the payment service that's what so we are done we almost configured all the topics and all the kafka related stuff now there is a two topic order event and payment event we configured in both the case order service as well as payment service right now only one thing i missed that i need to add server.port in our payment service as well go to the application.yml just add the server.port to 8082 so code wise we are good now we just need to test our application so to test our application the first step you need to up and running our kafka server since we are using spring cloud stream with kafka binder so we need to start the kafka server now i just need to go to the installation directory where i installed kafka then i will type command then first step i need to start the zookeeper then i just need to start kafka okay so let me run this then also i will open another terminal there i will start kafka server so let me copy this i will just add it once zookeeper will up i will start this so let me check yeah so zookeeper is up and running just enter this so if you observe kafka server is up and running now to see this kafka payload from order service to payment service i am going to install another software that is called kafka tool so you can search kafka tool in chrome and you can find this so based on your operating system you need to install any of them so i already installed for windows 64 bit and once you install you will find something like this okay so here you will get option to create a new connection then simply just click on this add new connection and just give the name of your cluster anything you can give i will give java tech key new cluster something like that okay now it will point to your default port 2181 and the kafka cluster version you can upgrade and downgrade based on your need and the host is local host just click on test yeah the connection is successful because we are already running our zookeeper and kafka server right so just click on this you can see there is no topic so far okay so we are good now now let's start our application to verify the transaction between order service to the payment service so go to the intellij id then let me start the order service application so i will directly right click run this order service yeah so if you observe order service up and running on port 8081 and also if you see the above console it connected to the kafka okay similarly let me go to the payment service and i will start this payment service
it will take few seconds yeah so this payment service is also up and running right now if you observe in this payment service we initialized user balance right so you can see the query fired in this console here let me go up yeah this is where the few record we manually inserted right now let me go to the database let me refresh this so all the table created now let me open this user balance we can see this record right so our application connected to the database and also it connected to the kafka now let's test our application so if you will go to the order service let me go to the order service controller we'll just fire this endpoint then we'll see the flow okay so let me copy this slash order slash create go to the postman so the method type will be post i'll give it http local host 8081 slash order slash create okay and this will be request body so you just need to change it to the json now let's pass the request body but before that i will just validate the database so let's say this particular user 105 having 999 rupees okay so then go to the request i will pass the same user user id 105 product id this much then amount is 500 okay so this particular user 105 is trying to purchase something cost 500 and if you will go and check in db he have enough balance to purchase that okay so it means this is the happy scenario so now let's create this order so just click on send immediately user will get the response order created now if you will see in your kafka let's go to the kafka tool and if i will open the topic you can see there is two topic right order event and payment event this is what we just created two topic order event and payment event now if you will go inside this order event if you go to the diagram once again just now we created some order immediately that event will publish to this order event topic now same you can verify here if you will go to the order event just change it to the string so that you can visualize the entire payload just update it go to the data make it newest just hit this you can see this is what the request so let me copy this i will paste it in this sublime you can see this is what the request we just fired with the order status created and then if you will go to your database and if you will check the user balance it will be deducted now he is having 499 already he purchased the amount 500 and again if you will go and check in your purchase order table so let me open this you can see order status is completed even payment status also payment completed of the price this this is what the product id and this is what the user id and amount successfully deducted right now what i'll do now this user have only 499 balance again i just want to fire something of higher cost so i'll give something uh, let's say 800 this guy having only 500 balance not exactly 500 499 and i am trying to purchase something 800 so let's change the some product id now click on send immediately user get the response order created now if you will go and check in your database let's go to the db so the amount will be not deducted because this is the failed scenario right that's what we are expecting from the transactional if something going wrong don't add any entry or don't update any entry in my db now if i will open this product order table so you can find the status order cancelled and payment failed so this record we are inserting to track the transaction okay but if you will go inside this user balance table let me reopen it the amount is as it is 499 there is no deduction happened right now if you will go to your kafka and again if you will go to check your payment uh, topic or payment event topic let me open this just change it to string you can find two event here okay with one is with status payment completed another one is payment failed now go to the data just hit this you can see there is two event right the first event is the happy scenario 
where user is able to purchase the order with the credit limit that is 500 right you can see the payment status is completed here and the second message if you will copy this the second message will be payment failed right and similarly if you will go to the order event topic you can see three event you can see the last one which will be order cancelled you can see this right order cancelled now let's try for other user let me go to the db let's see this particular uh, user id 101 having the amount 5000 so let's go to the postman 101 having 5000 so i'm going to purchase something 4500 okay and the product something some product id now i'll click on send immediately we got the response order created and now if you go to the db and check the user balance let me refresh this the amount got deducted now he is only having 500 similarly if you go to the purchase order table you can see another entry with a status order completed and payment completed now again if you go to the kafka you can see the order event this is the new order right let me copy this order created status and if you go to the payment event you can see the last one you will find also payment completed let me paste it here you can see the same order request order created and that guy 101 having enough balance to purchase that order that's the reason you find the message payment completed now let's say that particular user having now balance 500 he is trying something to purchase 1000 which is beyond his capacity right he is having only 500 and he is trying to purchase something 1000 so let me change some id okay now let me hit the request the status is order created but in dv will found payment status failed and order status will update to the cancel now let's go to the db and if i will check this you can see order cancelled and payment failed of the amount 1000 but this guy is not having this much amount now let me go to the user balance if you observe there is no deduction happened because he is only having 500 okay now if you will go to the kafka let me this is the payment right let me go to the order event you can find this the next status order cancelled and if you go to the payment event topic you can get the last entry payment failed okay now to verify all the transaction what you can do you can go to the postman also if you remember in order service we created another endpoint called get all the orders right now go to the postman and just remove this create change the request to get now click on send you can see all the order so the first order user id 101 is trying to purchase something 500 so the order status is completed and also payment status also completed now again that particular user is trying to purchase something 800 but that time he don't have enough balance so order cancelled payment failed same we tried for user id 101 right so this is how you can track all the order transaction so now i believe this Kafka or Saga choreography design pattern is clear for you. If not, let me know in comment section. And I would suggest you just run your both the application and debug mode. Then both the producer and consumer end in order service and payment service are the debugger so that you can get the complete flow. Here also you can see the each transaction, right? And also I shown you in the Kafka payload as well. What's going on between this order service and payment service? So we are done with Saga choreography design pattern complete implementation. Let me know in comment section if you guys are interested to know about Kafka orchestration design pattern. Okay. That's all about this particular video guys. Thanks for watching this video. Meet you soon with a new concept.